All right then, transfer deal sheet. Let's see what's popping us, booms. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yo, what's happening, people? How are you? How are you, mate? Are you good? I hope you're good. Really do hope that, and welcome back, of course, to Chelsea News here on Football Therapy, the d -d -d daily series here on the channel where I reflect what's being said about Chelsea, giving you my opinion on it, but as always, more importantly, asking for yours, and in today's video, or this morning's video, because you know, I'll probably be back later this evening to react to more stuff that's been said about Chelsea, because that's what I do around here. But yes, we're reacting to the Tuesday morning deal sheet, which is published every Tuesday by the very reputable Athletic. To give us a rundown on Huaguan with Chelsea, what we've done, what we're doing, where we're going, and where we've been. Mm. So yeah, man. Yes, strap yourselves in. Thank you as always for supporting the content. Like, subscribe, all that lovely juicy gear mate like and subscribe if you do choose to subscribe you should hit that sweet sweet bell baby yeah mm, project wham yam it's back in the building oh, it's bloody warm in here um and it might be me so yes we are going to hop into the athletic now and this of course like i said is the deal sheet it's the chelsea segment and um yeah because obviously there's been a lot of talk i, I reacted to the Italian news about uh, Victor Osman. Our Chelsea are interested in him still. Since publicising, publicising, since uh, publishing that video, Romano has reiterated his position or his knowledge, shall I say, on um, Osman to Chelsea, saying, "Yeah, Chelsea is sort of interested, but not with the current financial situation, which is pretty much what we've been saying, isn't it? Like the the, the wages, and um, obviously moresca has got a decision to make. What is he happy with? What he's got?" We'll talk about that. We'll get into all that at the moment. So let's hop in now to uh, the deal sheet. So what's happened this week for Chelsea? Well, of course, as we know, very impressive. Uh, Portugal under-20 midfielder Ronaldo Vega has completed his 11.8 million pound move from FC Basel, making him summer signing number five. After, of course, Mark Gu, Keenan Dewsbury Hall. So yeah, Gu the striker, Dewsbury Hall attacking midfielder, Amari Kellyman attacking midfielder, and of course Tosin Adarabayo, uh, central defender, who, by the way, now has the number four. Uh, he, he, can I just say quickly, I've been following Tosin on social media, and I really like him. Obviously, I've seen him in, in the training videos, the Chelsea media. He looks like very assertive. I know he's a bit older than a lot of them, but he's quite assertive. He looks like he's a, a bit of a leader who encourages his teammates. He gets amongst it, and uh, he's loving Chelsea. He's clearly, like, just ready for this. Do you know? I know he's, he's a big boy. He's not 16-year-olds like the rest of them that we sign. But, yeah, I love how he's integrated and... Um, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that free transfer. Um, of course, uh, Renato will join Chelsea in the upcoming US tour. His future career path will be decided after that. Well, if we know anything uh, from Renato Vega from his initial Chelsea media, this young man is incredibly intelligent, impressive in the way he speaks, and if nothing else, incredibly ambitious. So he will be backing himself to impress uh, Enzo Moresca at Chelsea to, to get himself a place in the squad, maybe. Who knows, man? Anything, and he, so much can happen. I know we are on July the 16th at time of recording. You know, the Euros are finished and preseason's on the way, but a lot can change. We don't know, like, you know, so much stuff can happen. Like, radical big moves can happen and we know if anything of this Chelsea ownership Havertz Mount Kovacic and all the rest of them big moves can happen high profile exits uh, everything in place of course is for defender Ansel Mino the Aaron Ansel Mino the 19 year old from Broca Juniors which is 17 million pounds plus add on a significant transfer fee for that young geezer um, of course in the plan is for him to return uh, to, uh, to Boca Juniors for six months on an initial loan and we'll review whether to bring him back or not in the December uh, period or in the winter period. Uh, the 19 year old defender, of course, and the US national team uh, left back Caleb Wiley uh, is, also, is on his way also after an 8.5 million pound fee was agreed with Atlanta United of the MLS. And of course, he will be going on loan to Strasbourg, Chelsea's sister club. Um, it's not a Strasbourg signing, it's not a Blue Coast signing, it's a Chelsea football club signing. He is just being loaned to Strasbourg. Okay, so let's move on and talk about Conor Gallagher. Huge talking point, of course, Gallagher. He will remain to be, until he puts pen to paper or is sold, 
This will be a story that just goes round and round. Chelsea are preparing for potential suitors to show their hands. This is regarding Connor. Tottenham Hotspur are interested and are likely to make a move, but Aston Villa's admiration is highly unlikely to lead to an impro- Oh, interesting. Interesting, because I thought, you know, now in the Champions League, Aston Villa, um, you know, not Tottenham, not a Chelsea rival. I thought they would have been a suitable landing destination should Gallagher have to go. But interesting that the Athletic, again, highly reputable, saying it's highly unlikely. Hmm, interesting indeed. Chelsea value Conor Gallagher in the region of 40 million to 50 million pounds, even though he's entered the final year of his deal they have um, an option to offer him a new deal on improved terms of course and keep him and solidify or even push that price tag up for uh, over the next 12 months and re review again in the summer uh, missing a key period to make strong first impressions with head coach Enzo Maresca is unfortunate for him of course he's been away with England but leeway will be afforded with the player of course having been at the Euros yeah, I mean, also, Conor Gallagher is an immensely known quantity, isn't he? Like, if, if Maresca, he believes he said on a... Well, he said in his interview, Maresca, that he's no, he feels like he knows all the players already. Well, apparently, it's been reported that when he was interviewed by Chelsea, um, he was very impressive because he presented all his information, opinions, and plans on the Chelsea squad. He'll know a lot about Conor Gallagher. He just will. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I do just want to end saying that my position or my opinion of what should happen um, is kind of the same, that a compromise needs to be met on both sides. Chelsea need to pay a little bit more wages than they want to, and they want to give, and they need to give them a shorter contract than they want to. And Conor Gallagher maybe needs to lower his wage demand slightly. Um, and like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not saying he needs to sign a longer deal. But maybe just to protect his asset value, he signs a three plus one or something. Do you know what I mean? Something like that that keeps him still in his 20s uh, when it expires. But Chelsea are protected in terms of selling an asset. And again, he's not just a piece of stock that needs to be sold. Even if that's the plan, like you think, well, he's not going to start for Chelsea. He's worth a lot of money. We could do with that cash. Even if that's the club's position, he's a great player, Connor, and he will be used. Even if it's off the bench, even if it's not starting every game, he's a good player. The best ability is availability. He is always available. Let's see what happens with Connor Gallagher. Okay, right. <clears throat> So here's the juicies. The juicies! What positions slash players are Chelsea looking at? Well, there's still a debate over whether Chelsea will go for an established striker such as... The fact how he's even being brought up feels kind of crazy for me. Newcastle's Alexander Izak, because I would take him in a second. He's being referenced here. Uh, Victor Osserman, of course, the aforementioned. Uh, of Napoli, and still Manchester City's Julian Alvarez, or even, of course, Ollie Watkins of Aston Villa. Um, each of these would be a highly complex deal to do. Yeah, seriously. Well, Osman wouldn't be a complex deal to do. It would just be expensive. Um, and it's unclear whether Maresco or not would be happy to work with the cast he already has, which, of course, includes Nico Jackson, not, not conventionally a striker, Christopher Nkunku. Not conventional air striker. Uh, just quickly on the these high profile strikers. Um Julian Alvarez, I reckon we probably could convince him personally. Use Enzo, of course, Enzo Fernandez to like whisper sweet nothings in his ear. Although I'm not so sure how buzzing Enzo is on Chelsea at the moment. You know, we'll see what happens there. Uh, Ollie Watkins, I'd love Ollie Watkins. I'd love the proven entities of Ollie Watkins and Alexander Isaac, or Isaac, should I say, in terms of Premier League proven. Uh, Ollie Watkins would be tough. And the fact how the previous segment on Gallagher says Villa won't really go in for Connor Gallagher makes Ollie Watkins seemingly more difficult to get over the line. And um, yeah, Newcastle would have to be seriously screwed financially to have to sell Isaac. And it looks like because they've made a couple of academy sales, it looks like they've done the PSR navigation tricks as well. So super tough. But it is it is interesting. Um to say that Maresca needs to make a, you know, a decision on what he is happy to utilise as Chelsea manager. Of course, the striker market is being monitored while a definitive decision is made. And here he comes again. Samu Amoradorian, 20 years old, of course, of Atletico Madrid, is one they are keeping an eye on. Yeah, um, Samu is an interesting one. As a profile, he's very interesting. He's a bit like John Duran for me. Like, good profiles, haven't had, like... 
you know, crazy numbers or any point, but you can understand why that a bit like, you know, Mikado Mudrik, that sort of raw potential in profile is uh, is interesting to them. But for me, it's just a bit like another young player who's, you know, I don't know. I've, uh, you know, if we sign him, support him, but at the moment, it's not interesting me. Uh, Chelsea would love to sign Spain star Nico Williams and, um, and have carried long-term groundwork on him. So we've really put the graft in for Nico Williams. That is interesting. Having watched him last season at Bilbao, the Spain left winger is uh, high on the club's list of targets in one of their priority positions. Wow. They feel well-placed, but with an awareness that Barcelona have designed strong designs and staying in La Liga appears favorable to the player. Wow, this is pretty strong on Nico Williams, actually. Uh, a few things to say there off the bat. Of course, him winning the Euros wouldn't have done Chelsea or any buyers any good. I mean, I'd have to forgive him for score scoring that goal in the final against England. To be honest, I've, I've kind of got over England. It's we were so worthy losers that it doesn't really matter. Um, yes, of course. The, the 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 one thing we've got on our on our in a, on, going for us in terms of this deal is that you know, Kukurea could play behind him again. I know it would be very very different uh, for Chelsea um, than it would be for Spain because for Spain he was playing as a conventional left back, uh, and if he if we are to believe that the left back will be inverting at Chelsea, um, he will not be behind. Um, Nico Williams that much, you know, as a wide, as a wide sort of cover to let him just do his thing. I get it. It's young Spanish winger wants to go to Barcelona, and also, you know, his his one of his besties in the Spain squad is Lamine Yamal, who plays on the other side. So it's classic like club and country wingers for club and country. Um, I don't think we can f with Barcelona in that sense. Um, Barca do have financial problems. Hashtag broke Alona. But uh, they seem to just pay high wages still, and we don't look like we're going to buy high wages. To be honest, I thought Nico Williams was completely dead in the water, but to reiterate what the Athletic has written here is, Chelsea feel well-placed um, for the player, and he's one of their priorities. That seems radical to me. Seems kind of crazy. What players could be leaving? Well, we know most of these, but let's reiterate. Keparitha Balaga is in talks with Al Itihan. Good. Talk, talk, talk. Who have had an initial offer turned down from Chelsea, of course. Talks continue with the Saudi club and others as a permanent departure for the 29-year-old goalkeeper edges closer. 29 is not old for a goalkeeper. That is prime, probably. Your prime for a goalkeeper is probably, like, what? 27 to 32, 33, maybe. Maybe early 30, earlier 30s. Um, still... Yeah, interesting that there are a bunch of clubs. It looks like we will resolve the situation with Kepa Aritha Balaga. Okay, so big, 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 big talking point is Rom Lukaku, who has two years left on his Chelsea contract, is another big name that Chelsea want to sell. Last season, both of these players were on international loan spots. Of course, uh, Lukaku to Roma, Kepa to Real Madrid, which are now limited to just six. Oh, yeah, the loan spots, so we can't keep loaning players. Good. I don't want to kick the can down the road. Get rid of them. Sort them out. Uh, players who are under 21 and are club trained are exempt from limitations. Well, that's probably why, um, well, Chelsea will benefit. Because although we sell pure profit academy assets, there's still a bunch that are talented and could do with loans. So it's nice to hear that they are exempt. Uh, but sales of those surplus or true requirements, such as Malang Sar, are preferred rather than using up spaces. Malang Sar, bro. I feel bad for Malang Sar. The forgotten man. Hundred thousand pounds a week he gets paid, and that's fine. By the way, I'm not like having a go at him. He that's why he joined Chelsea. He he, he left Nice, was it? Free transfer uh, as a highly rated young player, and um, he went to Chelsea because we offered him the most money as a free transfer. And he did play a little bit under Tuchel, didn't he? Left back, centre back. But yeah, waste of money, waste of wages, and that's not his fault. He I hope he goes and does well somewhere. Uh, picking the right route for Angelo Gabriel and Andre Santos, who are both currently um, at Chelsea doing preseason, who are both on loan at Strasbourg last season. Uh, David Washington, all the Brazilians here, and possibly new signing Mark Gu, who's a part of preseason thinking. 
Um, well, yeah, I think Hughes not with... Is he with the preseason guys? Yeah, I don't think he is. I know the other guys are, the young Brazilians are. Uh, Armando Brea remains a target for Everton, although that's not advanced at this stage. Of course, the Goodison Park future of Dominic Calvert-Lewin is likely to play a part in that move. Um, also, we reacted yesterday to an Italian report that Juventus like uh, Armando Brea. You know, if you're yet to go watch that video, go check it out. Um, others such as... Cesare Cassidy, Detro Fofana, Trovo Chalabar uh, are other potential departures. Yeah, I can see that all happening. Of course, Trovo Chalabar, we reacted to the story yesterday that he's turned down a few Prem moves, but that, as is his right, he, you know, he was given a long contract, he's financially secure, he trains well, he's a good guy, you know, he doesn't cause a problem, he's absolutely allowed to wait for his, his preferred move. So, you know, good on him for that. Uh, Leslie Ugochukwu is set for a loan and has been the subject of interest of clubs in the Premier League and France's Ligue 1. I would really like Ugochukwu to go to Everton, of course, because Amadou Anana has been sold for uh, 50 million quid to Aston Villa, replacement for Douglas Luiz, by all accounts. Um, I'd love uh, Ugochukwu to go to Sean Dyche's Everton. I think he could be an excellent uh, CDM for them and be good for his development asset value uh, all that kind of stuff so what do you think guys nice little catch up on all the transfer business to keep you up to date right now of course these stories are subject to change as always developments could happen at any minute and should they do so i will react here and give you the instantaneous information and my um, my commentary on it. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for hitting the bell if you choose to subscribe and thank you for liking the video and I hope to see you mate you back here very very soon. Take care of yourselves. Peace